Now Logitech sent me the Logitech G Pro X wireless gaming mouse. And this is definitely Logitech's highest end gaming mouse so far. And it's also a wireless model, which is meant to be extremely light as well, as you can see by the super light branding. And they've done this without cutting actual holes into the shell and actually making some actual improvements internally to reduce the weight, which makes this a pretty unassuming looking mouse. But considering that this is a very expensive mouse from Logitech and a pretty brand new model that they tout as being the best pro gaming mouse that they can make, how does it actually perform compared to their older gaming mouse as well as their cheapest gaming mouse? Let's take a look. So this is the Logitech G Pro X wireless mouse and it's a proper gaming mouse. It's meant to be for gaming but this is also very very expensive compared to this Logitech mouse which is the B100 office mouse. Now this is just a really basic mouse that is meant to you know let you use your computer not for gaming and because of that it is extremely cheap like ridiculously cheap it's only a couple of dollars if you get it off amazon or something and yeah i wanted to see how does this compare to logitech's best mouse that they can make and is the price difference actually worth it because to be honest they're touting this as the lightest gaming mouse possible well i have some news for you guys because this mouse is almost as light partly because it is so cheap that's why it's so light because i guess this there's just barely anything into it so they didn't really have to engineer it to be light it's just light because it's so cheap so i was really curious how this compares to a real proper lightweight gaming mouse now this is an old g402 that i have uh, this is actually my younger brother which is actually the guy that's going to be testing all these mouse because let's be honest i suck at fps games i just don't play fps games i mostly play racing games and stuff so yeah i'm not the best guy for testing mouse so that's where my brother comes in because he actually plays lots of FPS games and plays way better than me. And this is the mouse that he's been using and let's be honest, this is not the greatest mouse anymore especially because this weighs a freaking ton compared to the newer gaming mouse. What this mouse does very interestingly is that it has a like a gyro or accelerometer inside that's meant to be able to track fast movements better than normal mouse which might lose track if you move the mouse too fast over the uh, sensor. So let's just see how all these mouse compare to each other. But before that, let's take a look at the weights by measuring them and taking a look at the mouse of themselves. So first off, for the G Pro X wireless, this is a very lightweight mouse, like I said, because that's the whole point of this mouse. It is supposed to be an ambidextrous most of the time design because it does have two buttons on one side. And because of that, the design is very simple and, you know, Logitech really likes this design. They used this a couple of times before. I think that's because lots of people also liked it for FPS usage. It just fits in your hand really well while using it in like a fingertip grip, which is probably one of the best grips for a better aim. And that's how all these mouse are tested by using a fingertip grip. And this mouse, well, it's a pretty basic design. It's actually pretty unassuming because if you look at this and you don't understand what this is, you might think it's a normal mouse. Except the only thing that's telling this apart from a normal G Pro or any other normal office mouse that's all black is that this has a very unique flywheel for the scroll wheel in that it has some spokes so it's actually a hole and that's the only part that Logitech made hollow and the casing itself is not hollow because all the light weighting that they do is on the battery, on the components and on the plastic structure inside as well as on the scroll wheel so it doesn't, it doesn't actually have holes in the casing which can trap dust on some of the other lightweight mouse that have been marketed before. So I actually like this design way more than the other you know, ultra lightweight mouse that have been launched in the recent years. And on the bottom here you can see that it has a compartment on the bottom which is meant to store your uh, USB dongle that you can connect to your PC. And it also has some removable covers that you can switch out from a no uh, Teflon pad one to a version with the Teflon pad on the bottom. Or you could even just run it without the bottom cover at all and it's completely fine. And it'll be a bit lighter this way. Because let's measure the weight now. And here I have a scale to measure the weight of the mouse. And let me put this onto the scale. And you can see here that the G Pro X wireless weighs just over 60 grams. 
and that is already extremely light and let me tell you it does make a difference it does make it feel way faster when you move it around and you can even make it lighter by just taking off the bottom teflon pad like i did just now and you can see that the weight now ducks under 60 grams so this is a very impressively light mouse without having to shave off the outer cover of the mouse itself unlike the other brands and now let's take a look at the b100 mouse which is a logitech's cheapest mouse i guess now for the b100 you can see that it has a wire so that's gonna mean that the weight is kind of dependent on where the wire is resting but as you can see here with the b100 the weight is actually not that different compared to the logitech g pro x at just 65 grams so it's only five grams over the g pro x wireless so if you're looking for a lightweight mouse you don't need an expensive gaming mouse you need a really cheap mouse that it'll be light by default and for this mouse you can see that the design is also very simple and it actually does feel pretty well in your hand it feels pretty nice and you can pick it up and move it around just fine and the balance point of the mouse is on center and on point as well it doesn't tilt or tip over either way and it's basically the same as the g pro x wireless in that regard in being very well balanced so it actually does feel pretty nice in the hand but the only problem with this mouse obviously is its super cheap sensor and as well as the non-existence of the teflon pads on the bottom there's only four small dots and i'm not even sure they're actually teflon they might just be pieces of plastic because this is definitely not the most smoothest feeling mouse when you slide it around your mouse pad so for the G402, being that it's an older mouse, like I said before, this does not have the lightweighting philosophy of the newer FPS mouse. So it is quite a chonker. As I put it on the scale here, you can see it weighs over 100 grams, which is, well, it's a bit ridiculous because that's over 40 grams more heavier than the G Pro X and as well as the B100 mouse. So this is quite a significant difference in weight and you can definitely feel it once you move around the mouse because there's a bit more momentum that you have to fight with when you're trying to quick flicks and do stuff like that. And even when you pick it up to reset the mouse, you can feel the weight is actually not even uncentered. It's kind of towards the backside of the mouse, which is not great because it means that when you try to lift it up, it's, it, it just kind of tilts backwards and that creates some friction on the backside because there's no Teflon pad on this plastic area here, which actually gets scratched around once you pick it up. Now I know lots of mouse reviewers like do latency testing and see how fast they can respond to a click and to actually uh, shooting a gun on screen for example but I don't have those kind of testing uh, devices and yeah I really don't have the budget to buy like a really high speed camera or like a tester for latency like Nvidia's Reflex. I don't I didn't get that from Nvidia so if you want me to get that maybe email Nvidia. <laughs> so for now the way I'm testing mouse is actually more real world to you guys because we're just going to be using some games and see how it performs. Well, I say games, but specifically Valorant and just a few rounds of it in the deathmatch and seeing which mouse nets him the best wins as well as the most kills overall. So how we test it is that my brother will essentially get used to the mouse for a few days. Then after he got used to it, he'll try to do 15 rounds all at once and see the scores and record it in, in an excel sheet and if he feels there's something off in the run like a bad internet lag or you know something extraordinary in the gameplay that makes it feel like it's off compared to what he can do best with that mouse then he'll do another run until he feels like he got the best out of the mouse so you can see here that the differences in the scores that he got while using these different logitech mouse are not too far apart and the logitech pro x wireless is clearly the better mouse here but the other two mouse is only, you know, a few points behind, but it's actually quite a big difference in terms of how well these mouse actually performs if you look at the numbers. Because you can see that the G Pro X wireless just really nets him more chances to win the game and win the match. Because yes, even though this is an online death match and it's kind of, there's a factor of RNG in that, and there's some factors of like internet lag or something like that, and it's not super scientific and super accurate, I think this still paints a pretty clear picture that the G Pro X wireless does give you a competitive advantage compared to other people that's using an inferior mouse. And especially you can see the B100 and the G402 which is quite a bit lower than the G Pro X. But those two mouse on average is similar in terms of uh, mouse of kills that he got. But you can see that the B100 netted him less 
wind than the G402. Only by a difference of one though. And so I would say that the performance is quite similar. Although my brother really hated the G402 because he said it is just way too heavy. And he did say that the B100 performed really close to the G Pro X wireless, at least that's how it felt. But when seeing the numbers, you can see that it's actually a bit behind as well. So there is some actual engineering advantages of a proper gaming mouse like the G Pro X wireless that actually can give you a competitive advantage. But even the cheaper mouses are doing pretty well, so take it as you will. But I'd say that the B100 does really well here, especially being Logitech's cheapest mouse ever. And the G402 is especially underwhelming considering that it's branded as an FPS gaming mouse, but that's probably just due to its age and because of its weight really slowing it down in terms of proper aiming in an FPS game. And I guess the last thing to touch is that, is it actually worth it to buy a mouse such as the G Pro X Wireless, which is let's be honest, a premium gaming mouse that not everyone can afford. Now, if you have the money and you want the best possible wireless gaming mouse, then I would say why not? It is still one of the best gaming mouse out there. And even big mouse reviewers like Rocket Jump Ninja tend to agree because this was his favorite mouse before he made his own version of a mouse with the extra fi. But if you're just casually playing an FPS game, you don't, you don't need it. It's, it's, it's not a necessity, but it's just something that's nice to have, but you can get pretty close in performance with a much cheaper mouse. And it all comes down to your talent and your skill in aiming. Not so much how expensive is your mouse, because the difference is really not that big, especially if your mouse is also kind of similar weights like the B100 is. It does feel pretty well you know, in your hands and you could aim pretty well with that. But I could see the point in that if you buy a cheap gaming mouse, or even a cheap mouse like the V100, which is not a gaming mouse at all, you can feel like you're losing that last extra drop of performance from your aiming skills just because your mouse is limiting yourself. So if you don't like that feeling, then for sure, you can buy the G Pro X wireless, then you can be completely sure that the only thing limiting your gaming you know, skills is actually your skills and not your mouse. But yeah, this is still the king of the wireless uh, gaming mouse, in my opinion. It's still one of the best mouse. And lots of reviewers tend to agree. And I just think it's super neat what they do with the scroll wheel. It just feels like supercars when they use exotic materials like carbon fiber and then make the dash hollow, for example, like in the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento when they made the whole dash a hollow piece with spokes. It just kind of feels like that to me. So that just looks really cool and feels really cool to have. But yeah, that's it for this review. I hope you do enjoy this video and this comparison. And if you want me to make more videos about mouse performances, leave a comment down below and maybe subscribe to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks for watching.